then everything that you are doing is for no. And I'm not talking about where you just get, okay, let me just, okay, today I'm going to read this one verse. <laughs> Y'all, we, we got to build, we know how deep our bondages were. Let's be real about it. Think about some of the bondages that we were in, and we're still in. Some of us still in some things. Just be real about it. But look at the level of bondage that we were in, right? Some of us in deep. We were in deep. Now, the word level of your life has to exceed it in order for it to pull you out of the bondage that you're in. So if your word level is down here and your bondage is here, then no wonder the bondage still has more power in your life because you haven't connected to a greater source to pull you out of what you need to be pulled out of. That was, I think that was good. Oh, my God. That was, thank you, Lord. I thank you for that. Thank you, God. That, that answers some questions. Let's move on. Number uh, two. Don't neglect. Don't neglect the gift. If I had time, I was going to break down the, um, the actual definition of neglect according to when, when they uh, go into homes and take children, <coughs> how they, they assess the level of neglect. But I want us this week to think about our spiritual gifts and what God has called us to do as a child. And I want us to be honest and say, if they were, if, if child, if, if the um, DFS was coming to our house, spiritual DFS was coming to our house yeah. to examine the state of our spiritual gifts, what state would they be in? Would they be taking our kids from us? Or would they find that we were suitable parents? Or would they find that we just do enough just to get by? Or do they find that we really take this thing serious? Think about it. I really wanted to analyze that thing, it, and I, we're probably going to do that next week, from the standpoint of neglect and abuse. Because some of us, we've abused our spiritual gifts. And then we expect them to just respond to us when we're ready to respond to them. Yeah. And there's a reality to it. If you abuse me, whether verbally, you're not going to abuse me physically. There's going to be some problems. But if you abuse me, you can't expect to get the same thing out of me that I once gave you before you abused me. Right? Now you're going to have to start to show me that, that you've changed far beyond just your actions because you need me for that. It's just like we have to begin to develop a relationship with what God has called us to. Just like a relationship we develop with the person we're in a relationship with. And because it becomes that covenant thing. And we have to covenantly respect it to that level. Because I'm going to tell you now, God is not going to allow his gifts to be abused and or neglected. Just like he wouldn't allow you to be abused and or neglected. Why? Because you're his gifts as well. So the same care that he gives to you or that he gives to us, we have to give to our spiritual gifts. Number three. Oh, is that number, yeah, number three? Steer up the gifts. And we talked about it from the standpoint of starting our own fire and not depending on somebody else's fire. And that fire has started in our walk throughout the week. And I really think I'm going to start here next week because even with that, I really want to go into um, the embers. I want to break those down because it, it's, it's dioxide, di, dioxide, Hydrogen dioxide, uh -huh. oxygen, oxygen, and it's one other element that they're all in together. And how you put those elements together and they're able to start their own, they start their own fire from this thing. I'm going to bring a video next week too so that, so that we can see it. Because I feel like if we see an illustration of it, we can see it. It's just like when, if you go to the Old Testament, Jeremiah, and this is the state we have to get in. Because some of us, as I said, we go through certain situations, and when we go through those situations, we're ready to quit, we're ready to walk <coughs> away. But when you really have a covenant relationship with what God has called you to do, and you really have a covenant relationship with God, and you're really invested in what he called you to do, and you honestly value what he called you to do, and I'm talking real fast because I'm trying to get finished, when you really value it, even when you want to quit, it won't happen. You know why? Because you'll be like Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I wasn't going to say another word. I was going to quit. I wasn't going to prophesy again. Candy, I see you moving side to side. Them hands, girl, start shaking. But he said it was like fire shot up in my bones. See, some of us, we have a fire when we come to church. And the fire operates on our flesh. It operates on the outside of us. That's why it's only able to, to sustain us while we're here. Some of us have a fire that affects our signal. 
That's our skin mm-hmm. underneath. Oh, you speaking you. right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it only affects that. So oh. we may be able to survive a little bit outside of here, but it never really gets down to our bones. When something really gets engraved inside of your bones, if you ask anybody with like arthritis or anything like that, when they start, if you ever broken a bone, when that bone starts to heal, your whole body is affected through it. So when the fire of God really gets down to your bones, no matter what you're going through, the circumstance that you're going through, this is helping me out. I'm going to pull myself out of this. Aye, aye, aye. When, you, when that fire gets down to your bones, then it begins to affect every situation you're going through, whether that situation is positive, whether that situation is perceived to be negative. It begins to pull you out of it. Why? Because now the fire has a greater depth inside of you, a greater effect inside of you than the circumstances and situations that you're dealing with. The problem is our circumstance and situation is down to our bones. And we haven't allowed God's fire to get to the depth of our bones. But if we ever want to be effective in ministry, we ever want to master some of these things, we ever want to flow consistently and operate consistently in our gifts, then what we have to begin to allow the Spirit of God to do is to get rooted down into our bones. But it keeps going back to it. I know y'all are like, man, can you shut up with saying the same thing? It all is through the Word of God. You cannot have a relationship with Him void of His Word. And then I'm going to parallel it as well with prayer. And I'm not talking about a prayer where we sit down and we tell Him what we want. But I'm talking about a prayer where we allow Him to communicate Excuse me, with us as well. Mm. Will we rise early in the morning to seek him? Mm. Not where we're getting up and we're rushing to get out the door, but we take the time to have that daily devotion with him. <laughs> where we allow his word to marinate in our spirit. We allow him to lead and direct us through prayer in the morning. Then our whole day changes. Why? Because our outlook changes. Our problem is not in the circumstances and situations we go through. Our problem is in our outlook. That's the problem. Because everything that we go through, we have the power to overcome. But the problem is what we fed ourselves before we face it. Because if you feed yourself a bunch of junk, you're going to be out of shape. But if you learn to take care of your body, then not only are you in shape, but now your body can also begin to fight off certain things that they can't fight when you eat a lot of junk. My lands. in the spirit.